The exact meaning of the phrase mass extinction is not known. However, there are common features for each one. Many species, between 30 and 95%, can become extinct. It affects a broad range of ecological niches, typically marine and non-marine. It affects animals both big and small, and a mass extinction can occur over a short period of time, either caused by one single event or a cluster of interlinked causes. Today, we'll be ranking the primary reoccurring causes of a mass extinction by how often they happen and for how many of the five major mass extinctions they are responsible for. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's actually a boloid about the size of Mount Everest hurtling towards the Earth's surface and crashing off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Known as the Chicxulub asteroid, this wiped out non-avian dinosaurs and many other animals who inhabited the Earth some 66 million years ago. The smoke and dust emitted by the impact plunged the Earth into a freezing blackout by reducing solar heat and light for over a year. This lack of light prevented photosynthesis, destroying base-level food chains on the planet. Meanwhile, the sulfur dioxide and water vapors combined to produce sulfuric acid aerosols, which fell as sulfuric acid rain. Tsunamis immediately swept the planet after the impact, while fires raged that contributed to the smoke and ash cloud that plunged the world into darkness. Glaciation occurred during the Ordovician when CO2 was used to buy elevated levels of silicate rock weathering, which was enhanced by rocks being pushed up by the ancient Appalachian mountain chain. Sea levels during this period were much higher than today, so the continent of Gondwana along with North America and Europe would have been covered with shallow seas. The huge Gondwana landmass drifted over the South Pole during the late Ordovician, where it completely froze over. This global cooling would have been extremely detrimental during the Ordovician, as biota were used to greenhouse climates and they could not adapt to this rapid change in temperature. This glaciation would have drained the epicontinental seaways and wiped out these local communities. However, biota in the open marine setting did not suffer nearly as much. During the late Devonian, vascular plants on land decreased CO2 levels in the atmosphere, causing a fall in temperature. Plate tectonics is the movement of the plates that make up the Earth's crust. This forms the continents and oceans and ultimately determines the shape of the Earth's surface. In the Permian-Triassic, there was the creation of the second supercontinent, Pangaea. The unification of these lithospheric plates led to the removal of geographical boundaries and in turn caused several species to be occupying the same ecological niche. This resulted in the interspecific competition increasing and the rule of competitive inclusion coming into play. This means two or more species cannot coexist stably in a limited ecological space. Species less adapted to these environmental conditions then die out. The movement of tectonic plates also destroyed biodiverse reef populations that typically inhabit plate margins where the plates collide. The formation of these supercontinents due to plate tectonics also led to the formation of super -ocean such as Panthalassa, which lacked ocean circulation, leading to our next cause. In today's world, water covers up to 71% of the Earth's surface, with an estimated 50 to 80% of all life on Earth found under the ocean surface. However, during periods such as the Devonian, this coverage was as high as 85%, with an even higher percentage of life found in the sea. Anoxic waters are deprived of dissolved oxygen, which occurs when the rate of bacterial oxidation of organic matter exceeds the supply of dissolved oxygen. Extreme global warming and the related impacts on ocean circulation, as well as marine eutrophication, exasperated by terrestrial weathering were likely significant triggers for ocean deoxygenation during the end Permian and Triassic mass extinctions. In the Devonian, new forests broke down rocks with their root systems, releasing the nutrients such as phosphorus and washing them into rivers and oceans. Plankton utilized these new food supplies and bloomed en masse, choking marine life. Yes, volcanoes are in fact the number one leading cause of mass extinctions. Volcanic eruptions are believed to have been involved in all of the big five mass extinctions to occur on Earth. Volcanic eruptions spew out toxic gases and dust particles, blocking out the sunlight from reaching the Earth, causing a solar block adding to the rising temperatures. It is believed that one of the biggest and deadliest mass extinctions to have occurred on Earth was the End Permian extinction, also known as the Great Dying which happened around 252 million years ago. It was caused by violent volcanic eruptions causing the global temperature to rise at an unprecedented rate due to the surge of CO2 that was released into the atmosphere and starved the oceans of oxygen. Until recently, the Siberian traps were believed to be solely responsible for the end Permian mass extinction 
with one massive volcanic eruption causing the temperature on Earth to become unbearable. But studies in recent years have shown eruptions that occurred at the same time in South China are also now believed to have contributed. The end Triassic mass extinction is also believed to have been caused by volcanic eruptions at the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. These volcanic eruptions were underwater and caused the CO2 rates to rise rapidly leading to ocean anoxia. The Deccan traps in India around 66 million years ago were another massive eruption of basaltic lava with layers of magma as deep as 1.2 miles, making this the second biggest eruption of all time. As seen, many of these causes are reoccurring and work in tandem with one another to create conditions that would lead to one of the five major mass extinctions. Today, human activities such as the destruction of habitat, pollution and ensuing climate change have led to loss of biodiversity around the globe. We may already be in the sixth mass extinction, the Holocene extinction, which is soon to change life on our planet as we know it.